Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. My name is Walton Pantland. South Africa is the most unequal society in the world and at the moment we're seeing an unprecedented amount of industrial unrest. We're speaking to Tahir Seema of the South African Municipal Workers Union about the issues faced by South African workers. We're also talking about privatization in South Africa and the e-tolling that the government is introducing to privatize South Africa's road network as well as talking about local authority and municipal workers in South Africa and their fight for decent wages, for service delivery and against corruption. Sahir, can you give us some context? What's the political situation in South Africa at the moment? I mean, currently in South Africa, debates are raging on at present with regards to the capitalist system and the onslaught that uh, it has embarked on. And workers are clear about the political and socio-economic orientation of the country. And uh, now, more so than ever before, workers are calling for an alternative. And uh, workers are clear what they want and how they want to achieve it as well. So for the first time in South Africa, we, all, we are also seeing workers standing up, speaking out against the capitalist onslaught, and also joining leftist formations like the South African Communist Party and aligning themselves with progressive movements to ensure that the country's economic trajectory is realigned, especially towards uh, labor-intensive sectors that uh, the country needs to invest in. I mean, there's mass amounts of unemployment currently in South Africa, and uh, many people are at their wit's end with regards to coming up with alternatives. Also, the ruling party, the African National Congress, is uh, clearly admitting for the very first time that the economic trajectory that South Africa has been on is not assisting the masses and not assisting the working class in general. And so for this reason, many political formations, particularly the African National Congress, are also realigning the economic trajectory and speaking more left talk rather than uh, what they were speaking a few months ago. And the workforce is getting far more agitated, far more quickly in comparison to a few years. And many formations, particularly the ruling alliance, the tripartite alliance, which also includes COSATU, are discussing ways and means within which we can quickly quell these issues and deal with workers' reasonable and legitimate demands. In fact, at this present moment in time, a majority of the mining sector in this country and their workforce are threatening to withdraw their labor in favor of a double-digit annual wage increase. Also, many mining companies are being threatened with uh, um, nationalization. And because they are being threatened with nationalization, they are panicking and they are trying to uh, give workers or share the wealth with workers. However, it is a little too late and uh, the workforce is clearly agitated. So the country will have to do something very quickly and drastically change the way in which we go about doing our our day-to-day -day business. Even the trade union movement has come under increasing criticism. The trade union movement has uh, acknowledged that it had dropped the ball and has not been servicing members in the way that it should be servicing members. And because of this, the Marikana tragedy had taken place. It is not only because of this, but this was uh, obviously a contributing factor to why the tragedy had taken place. So the entire movement is beginning to ask itself very hard questions and it's beginning to uh, tackle the issues that it hadn't tackled a number of years ago. So there's clearly going to be a radical shift in our economic policies and also the way in which we go about doing our ordinary day-to-day -day work, whether it be from the trade union movement, political parties, and the broader mass democratic movements. There is a massive shift towards leftist politics and also a massive shift in ensuring that workers' reasonable and legitimate demands are listened to at the very least, particularly by the employer bodies. Mm -hmm. So here, the cost of living has risen very sharply in South Africa over the past few years. The rising cost of living was also a major motivating factor behind the Arab Spring. Do you think we're seeing the same dynamic in South Africa? Exactly. The, dy the dynamic is frighteningly um, uh, similar to the Arab Spring countries. 
the Middle Eastern and North African countries that have experienced uprisings. The cost of living in South Africa has risen so sharply, as you correctly pointed out, that the working class are unable to keep their heads above water or to keep afloat. And this is why we continuously see the workforce calling for double-digit annual wage increases. An important point to also make is that when the workforce does call for double-digit annual wage increases, it is not unreasonable and it is not unacceptable for them to be making these calls. If you earn nothing and if you call for a double-digit annual wage increase, you still end up earning nothing. So this is the rationale behind which workers are calling for a double-digit annual wage increase. Their salaries are so pitiful and are so little that even the double-digit annual wage increases are not, are not nearly enough to keep them afloat. And the current increase in the basic necessities are rising so sharply. Also, most recently, in fact, just last week, the, the country had called upon a high-level delegation, including uh, Labour, to meet and discuss what we call the privatization of roads, where the country is now planning to tax roads national, provincial, and local roads throughout the country in the form of e-tolling. And the masses, together with civil society and labor, have been fighting off this privatization of roads to the best of its ability. However, the country is pushing forward at a rapid pace to increase or to implement this e-tolling system. The sad part is that once this e-tolling system is implemented, it would immediately see a drastic increase in the price of basic necessities, particularly food, because the logistic companies would have to fork out immense amounts of money to pay for transporting foods, which is eventually passed on to uh, the consumer. And this is proving to be such a challenge that the Congress of South African Trade Unions is now beginning mobilization towards an all-out strike action involving all sectors of the economy, which would obviously bring the country to a grinding halt. But it is something that must be done because the increase in the price of basic necessities is increasing so sharply that if we do not do something drastic about it now, it would cause massive problems going forward. And now, even though the trade union movement is calling for double-digit annual wage increases, very soon the double-digit annual wage increases would not be enough because of the rise of uh, the price of basic necessities. And this is due to a failure by the government to maintain infrastructure, is that right? Correct. The current government in power at this moment in time had not adequately planned for the maintenance of roads and it is clear that the government does not have the money to renovate, maintain and build the kind of roads and infrastructure needed for the country. However, had there been better forward planning, the country could have properly planned in the past 10 years for what needed to have taken place. The same had happened with the country's utility and energy provider, ESCOM, that needed a trillion rand to bail itself out to build nuclear power plants and to increase its capacity. It had then passed on the pricing and the cost of this to the end user and consumers had seen a rise in electricity prices of between 20 and 30 percent just this year alone and the preceding years would see the same percentage increases. Had the government properly planned for all of this, we would not have been sitting in this current dilemma. However, in the high-level talks that were taking place between Labour and government, in the negotiation it was revealed that there is an alternative to pay for the current road infrastructure that the, current, that the country needs. And that alternative is that the country must include in the fuel levy a few cents increase to uh, bankroll what is currently needed in the form of infrastructure. The number crunching was done and the technocrats had indicated that if the fuel levy is increased by just a few cents, this would cover what is needed in the form of uh, money to maintain and build new road infrastructure. Our position on the e-tolling is very clear. We would want the e-tolling to be scrapped completely. 
There is no compromise on this situation only because no one can afford it. It is quite clear that absolutely no one can afford it. And contrary to what government has been uh, uh, communicating by its propaganda machinery to ordinary South Africans, we cannot afford it. That's uh, the long and the short of the story. And civil society, for the very first time in a very long time, is united on the e-tolling issue. We have never seen such unity on any other issue in the past, in the recent past, as we saw on the e-tolling issue. We had brought together tens of thousands of people just this year in demonstration of the e-tolling system. And we are confident that uh, if we continue to call for a total banning and boycott of the e-tolling system, there is nothing government would be able to do other than to scrap the system completely. But the challenges are great currently in South Africa. In fact, they are of such a level that we haven't seen such challenges in the country before. And many stalwarts of the liberation movement have also come out commenting that uh, drastic action must be taken now before we are met with an Arab-style uprising. So here's Samu is currently engaged in a dispute at local government level. Can you tell us a bit more about that? The South African Municipal Workers' Union is currently mobilizing towards a national protest action which would begin as soon as this week. And the national protest action is to call for two very specific demands, both reasonable and legitimate. The first demand is that we are calling for pay parity in the local government sector together with a market-related salary for the middle and lower income workers Secondly, we are calling for corruption to be rooted out from the local government sector. We have made comments before to say that the local government sector in South Africa is the most corrupt sector of government with the least levels of accountability. So it is of serious concern to us. These are our two demands which, are, which we are currently mobilizing uh, all our members around and our membership is likely to come out as soon as this week. These are very two important demands, and it would be well worth me explaining to you why they are important demands. Firstly, the local government sector, they never ever existed pay parity in the, in the system. So what you find is the higher income workers together with counselors and politicians earn far in excess of market-related salaries, whereas the labor, the market uh, or the labor force, the ordinary workers, earn far below market-related salaries. Even though these workers are at the cold face of service delivery, they earn far below what they should be earning. And this fight of ours has been going on for a number of years now. It is also important to remunerate these workers accordingly so that they can deliver quality public services. We, have, uh, we strongly feel that if you don't remunerate these workers accordingly, then you will have a demotivated workforce that would not deliver the kind of services South Africans expect and both deserve. So that is why this is a very important demand. We've been fighting for this for the past three years, in fact, and we've been tied up in legal wrangles for the past three years. And at this moment in time, the workforce has indicated they are not willing to go through this expensive legal process any longer, and they are going to take to the streets to demand what they rightfully deserve. Secondly, on the issue of corruption, the corruption issue has uh, crippled the entire local government sector. The local government sector is not functioning or has not been functioning properly only because it has been crippled by uh, corruption nepotism and the likes and we are trying for the very first time to rally all our members behind this demand to try and ensure that corruption is rooted out the cancer of corruption is rooted out from the local government sector so we to begin this action as soon as this week and the membership the rank and file on the ground have already indicated overwhelmingly that they are ready to take indefinite strike action and they are ready to go on strike action up until such time that the employer body responds to the workers' reasonable and legitimate demands. Just to give you a little bit of context of the South African situation, currently in South Africa, the remuneration between the lower and middle class workers and the management is huge. In fact, it is so big that currently South Africa is the most unequal country in the world. 
and many protest actions have uh, spurred as a result of this including the Marikana tragedy that had taken place in the northwest province. It had taken place against this backdrop that the workforce or the management is remunerating themselves far in excess of what they should be getting, whereas the workforce that put their lives on the line on a daily basis are not getting enough to live a decent uh, life. And this is the same challenge that many workers are having throughout the country, particularly public sector workers, and now, of course, the mine workers as well, who are putting their lives at the risk on a daily basis. We are likely to see many more strike actions taking place in the weeks and months to come, only because of this inequality and inequity that currently exists in the workforce. So here, thank you.